Okay, so let's, uh, you know, look at the group Z4. So Z4 is the group of, it's basically one, two, three, four, uh, you know, um, the set under addition mod four, right? So another way of saying it is that we have four equivalence classes, uh, which are like, you know, say- Sir, shouldn't it be zero, one, two, three? Yeah, you're right, sorry. Thank you. Yeah, so there is a, uh, Yeah, and sorry, yeah, you're exactly right, yeah, right? So, you know, we know this kind of, I'm not gonna write this out, but you know, uh, but there is another group which is called, say, Z divided by five Z into, this is called the multiplicative group mod five. So what are the elements of this group? So this group has four equivalence classes, but they are, they all differ by five. So minus four, one, six, uh, 11, 16, dot, dot, that's one. Two is a dot, 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 minus three, two, um, seven, 12, 17. And number three is dot, 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 minus two, three, eight, 13, 18. Four is minus one, four, nine, 14, 19, dot, dot, dot. Okay. So what is the uh, multiplication is just group multiplication. It's just the usual multiplication. So if I take two and three, then what I have to do is that I have to just take some representative, say you can take 12 from two. And for three, let's just take three. Uh, so 12 times three is 36, right? So 36. So which, so which group has zero? So this group doesn't have zero. Okay, so we have one because uh, you can't really get from, uh, yeah, so these are the equivalence classes that are, we are defining, okay. So you see that zero is, is not going to be an element here. But the idea is that, you know, uh, when we, uh, you know, when we have, when we multiply 36, if I look at where 36 is going to be, well, we have to divide it by five and whatever is, is left over is going to be its equivalence class. So 36 is going to be part of one, one bar, right? So we have two dot three is equal to one. So we have basically cleverly, you know, uh, found a subset of the integers such that under this multiplication modulo five, uh, that it, it forms a closed set and it has a group structure. Okay. Yes, I got it. So, so let's uh, take a break and uh, meet back here at uh, quarter past six, and then we'll uh, show how, you know, the seemingly very different groups are actually isomorphic, okay? Um, sir, 
that's five, right? Divided by not three. Yeah, thank you for it's a very bad handwriting. Yeah, thank you. So Z4 should be zero, one, two, three, right? Or zero, two, three, four. Again, you're right. Thank you. I don't know why I made all those mistakes. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Any, anything else? Any other comments? Typos? Errors? Okay, let's take a break then and then we'll meet back here again. Okay, so I'm back. Uh, shall we start? Yes, yes. Okay, so just one comment is that, you know, this new group, the multiplicative group mod four, uh, the way that we have, you know, it's uh, the equivalence classes have been chosen is that they exclude uh, all multiples of five, right? So there's no zero, there's no five, there's no 10, so that, you know, uh, whatever we have left, you know, the module, the module, so none of the, you know, the representatives are divisible by five. So what we have here is that as, as the leftover, uh, uh, you know, when we divide it, we have basically um, either one, two, three, and four, right? So that's how, how the, these uh, equivalence classes have been uh, made up. And on the other hand, if I go back to this thing, you know, like all the integers are included in Z4 um, and uh, it's just, so, you know, it has a topology where, you know, uh, zero is identified by four and so on and so forth, right? So, okay, so, you know, I, I'm kind of taking a little bit of a time, but, you know, uh, I think it's worth doing. Uh, let me, you know, give you the multiplication table. Let's write the multiplication table for Z4. So let's call this, uh, so the multiplication for Z4 is essentially addition modulo four, and we have zero, one, two, three, and, uh, and you know, we can give them bars, uh, zero, one, two, three. And, you know, if you do the addition, we have zero, one, two, three, because zero is the identity element there, right? And then we have one, two, three, zero, two, two, three, zero, one. And then we have three, zero, one, two. So uh, we could have, you know, written, we can say the right in a more abstract way where this is a group uh, multiplication and the group elements, let me give us names E for identity A, B, C, E, A, B, C. Now, if I identify E to zero, A to one, B to two, and sorry, I'm not, why am I giving bars? I don't need bars on the side. Uh, B to two and C to three bar. Then we have essentially E, A, B, C, E, A, B, C. And here we have B, C, E, B, C, E, A, C, E, A, B. So each row is essentially a cyclic permutation of the one before. And of course, like incidentally, you can uh, observe that, you know, none of the rows 
are repeated, right? The ordering of every row is there. So this is the multiplication for Z4. Now let's, you know, make the multiplication table for the other group. Um, so the multiplication table for Z by five Z. So if I do this, then what do we have? Here, let's just put into, and here we have, I'm oh, sorry, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four here. One is the identity element. So we have one, two, three, four. And immediately we can write one, two, three, four. But now you see that, you know, if I, two times two is four, right? Two times two is four. So, okay, so we have, we can put four there. Three times two is six. Uh, so, which is, uh, uh, yeah, three times two is, Okay, I think I made a mistake here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Uh, one. Okay, so uh, we have two, four. Uh, three times two is uh, uh, is six, so that should be one here, right? Then four times two is uh, eight, so there should be three here, right? Is this correct? And then three times two is six. So there should be one here. Three times three is nine. So uh, that's going to be four here. Three times four is 12. So that's going to be two, right? And then, uh, Two times four is eight. So that's gonna be three. Uh, three times four is 12. So that's gonna be two. And here it's one, right? Did I make a mistake? Okay. So now what we can do is that we can say, okay, if I have, say uh, if I have a abstract multiplication table now, then I have to identify, so, and uh, if I identify E to be one and A to be two and uh, say B to be, uh, Oh, uh, did I make a mistake? It seems like it's shuffled a little bit. Like you have to rearrange the rows in order for them to match up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. So I think B is going to be four and C is going to be three, right? So then the first row is going to be uh, E, A, uh, C, and this is going to be B, right? And uh, uh, shouldn't it be E A B C? E A B C, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense. Here. So it has to be A B C, right? So then B has to be three, right? Uh, I think I made a mistake. Let me just see. Uh, hmm. 
Mm. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think I made a mistake somewhere. Um, just one second. Hmm. Uh, let me just uh, look at my notes. Okay, just uh, give me one second. I think I, I made I made a transcription error which has propagated. So let me just uh, look at the notes. Just uh, one second. So, yeah, okay, so, so everything is good. So uh, let me just like, uh, I didn't make a mistake uh, here, but let me just first rewrite this multiplication table, okay? So, you know, uh, we can always uh, shuffle rows and columns, right? So not like shuffle, uh, rows. So we can write this as, say, um, so we have one, two, four, three. So we, what I'm doing is that I'm just exchanging this row with this column. And I will also do this, exchange this, uh, sorry, this col these two columns and these two rows. Okay. Then I have, uh, and I'm just not gonna bother with the bars. Okay, so if I do this, then I have uh, one, of course, this doesn't change, this doesn't change. Here, uh, four comes here and then three goes there. And here, of course, uh, what was before two, four, they won't change, but these two guys will now switch places. So we get three and uh, one. And now here, three and four will switch places. So we get four here and we get three here and we would get two, one, but except now, because we have also exchanged these things, we get one and two. And now three, and, uh, and the last row we get three, one, two, four. Yeah, okay, so, so. You know, this multiplication, these are, the, these are the same multiplication table, right? Tables. And now, suppose I say, let me call E1 and then A2. And then, so, A, you know, we have their bars here. And B, say, 4. And C, 3. And then uh, what we can do is that we can then, you know, write this multiplication table in a more abstract form. Okay. So we can uh, say this is E and then A, B, C, A, sorry, A, E, A, B, C, and then E. Uh, so this should be uh, this, A, B, C. Then we have E, A, B, C, A, B, C. And see that, you know, here we have four, four is B. And here we have three. Three is C, and here we have one. Uh, one is E, right? So we see B, C, E, A. So this way, if we C, E, A, B. So you know, with the identification of these guys, we get exactly the same multiplication table as the previous group. So if I make a map, if I make a map from say, uh, you know, a map from say uh, Z4 to the multiplicative group modulo five, 
you know, where what we do is that we say, uh, you know, the map is such that one from the, sorry, the, the zero from the first group, sorry, that should be zero. Zero from the first group goes to one. And uh, then uh, one from the first group goes to say uh, two. And then uh, two from the first group goes to say four and three from the first group goes to three, then we see that and, and, and that in the, the first group has the plus, you know, mod four and the second group has, you know, multiplication mod four, you know, these are the, um, you know, this is the map between the two different uh, group structures. So then we see that we have a, an isomorphism, right? So this is an example of an isomorphism between two groups. Okay, is that clear? Yes, sir. So what we, so what we have here is a one-to-one -one correspondence. It's also on two, and that's not enough. The fact that the two uh, group uh, multiplication tables match up mean that the group structure is also preserved. Okay, that's the important thing. Okay, let me just make a couple of comments. So this is kind of a trivial example, but you know, I think it's instructive. Is that uh, even here, you know, we had to think a little bit um, in a group, uh, you know, map is one to one. And on two. Number two is that the group structure is preserved. So that means it's, you know, number three. This means, you know, uh, this is a, a group isomorphism. Okay. Any questions?